Do installing AMD's chipset drivers improve gaming performance? Or do the drivers that come built into Windows work just fine? Today, we're gonna find out. Stay tuned. So I had a new idea for a series of videos. These videos are going to be testing presuppositions. I've worked on computers for a really long time, and in that time, I have admittedly formed some biases and presuppositions about things that you should or shouldn't do on your system. One of these presuppositions we tested last week when we looked at whether or not the high-performance power profile is worth using or not. This week, we're gonna look at whether or not it's necessary to install AMD's chipset drivers, or can you just use the drivers that come built into Windows? Personally, I have to admit, I haven't installed AMD's chipset drivers since the Enforce chipset. But today, I'm gonna find out if I've been leaving performance on the table. But first, I gotta pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. So yes, like I said, I haven't used AMD's chipset drivers since the Enforce chipset. I think that was like the first Athlon. Back then, it was necessary to install Enforce drivers on the system or it's just things just wouldn't work. However, with Windows 10 and 11, they have done an exceptional job of installing all the necessary drivers during the setup process. So I just never bothered to try to fix what wasn't broken. Because here's the thing, Microsoft doesn't actually write these drivers. The drivers that come built into Windows come from the hardware manufacturers themselves. So they essentially are the AMD chipset drivers. These drivers are updated on a pretty regular basis. At least they're supposed to be. But I was poking around inside my system and I noticed that the AMD SM bus driver was from 2017. Now, the SM bus driver happens to be one of the drivers that comes in the AMD chipset package from AMD. After going to AMD's website, I found that the 2017 SM bus driver actually is the latest one. Apparently, that specific driver hasn't been updated in a while. However, this got me to thinking. A chipset driver package comes with more than just the SM bus driver. In fact, it comes with a lot of different drivers. I think almost 30 from my count. So, if we can see big gains by updating our GPU drivers, then why wouldn't we see decent gains by updating our chipset drivers? So today, I'm gonna show you how to update your chipset drivers, and then we'll look at what kind of performance we can expect from it. Let's jump on the system and I'll show you how to do it. So here we are on a fresh install of Windows 10. This is an extremely stock install. The only thing that's been done is I've updated the GPU drivers to the latest drivers, but it's currently running the factory drivers that come with Windows for the chipset. So we're gonna go ahead and update this to the AMD chipset drivers. And to do that, the first thing that you're gonna need to do is actually get the chipset drivers. So if we go to AMD's website, and I'll go ahead and leave a link to this in the description below, but once you get to it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You scroll down and you'll have this little form right Right here and what you want to pick is chipsets right here at the bottom and then select your chipset from the list so if you scroll down I'm currently running an AM4 socket so this is gonna be based on your socket and then after that it's gonna be based on your chipset now if you're not sure what your chipset is you can get a program called CPU ID that'll help you identify it let me show you how to do that so I'm gonna click right here I'm gonna to go to my downloads directory because I have this downloaded already and I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below where you can download this but once you launch the program program it'll take a second to open up and then once it does 
you can actually click on right here where it says the main board tab right here and it'll give you all the information about your main board. Well, if you come down here to your chipset information, you can see that I'm currently running a B450 chipset. So that's essentially all we need to know at this point is that we're running a B450. Yours might say B550 or whatever chipset you have, it'll be filled in in this area right here. So once you figure out what chipset you have, go ahead and pick it on the list and hit submit. And then it should send you to a page right here where you can select which operating system you're running, whether it's Windows 7, 10, or 11. So we're running Windows 10, so we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And then this is the driver we're gonna download. We're just gonna go ahead and click the download button. And then from there, it's gonna take it a second to download, but it shouldn't take too long. It's only 63 megabytes. So if you have a slow internet connection, it might take you a little bit longer. And once it's downloaded, we can go ahead and close our browser right here and we can launch the chipset drivers from our download directory. So once we click on the driver itself, we can go ahead and hit yes to the user account control and it'll start the install process. Now it may take a second to start, so just give it a second and it should launch the installer. And it looks like it launched it, but it launched it behind my window right there. Okay, so now it, did it close it? All right, so we're gonna wait for a minute and eventually it'll come here. I'll probably skip until it actually starts. Oh, there it goes. All right, so here we go. So this gives you all your different um, sections within the chipset driver. I would recommend just leaving them all checked. That's what I did when I tested this. So go ahead and leave them all checked and go ahead and hit install. And it should install your chipset drivers at this point. Now, it's gonna take a second for these chipset drivers to install, but once they're set up, go ahead and restart your system and you should have the latest chipset drivers on your computer. Now that we got the chipset drivers installed, let's look at some benchmarks and see how the system actually runs. The system I'm using for these benchmarks is a Ryzen 5 5600. I have 32 gigs of PC 3200 and an RTX 3060. Both the CPU and GPU are water-cooled and the system is currently running, like I said, Windows 10 Pro that is completely unmodified. I even left the power profile unbalanced. The only thing I've updated is the GPU drivers, and the latest chipset drivers, obviously. Now, let's jump into the benchmarks. The first game we're looking at is Black Mesa. This is an older game and should fill that older game genre. With the default Windows drivers, I got an average FPS of 174.9 and a 1% low of 110.7. We also got a 0.1% low of 62.7. Once upgrading to the latest AMD chipset drivers, I got an average FPS of 174.2, which is a 0.4% drop in performance, but definitely well within the margin of error. Our 1% low was 114.7, which actually gave us a 3.5% increase from the stock drivers. And then when looking at the 0.1% low, we got a 70.9, which is a 12.3% increase from the factory drivers. It looks like the AMD chipset drivers definitely help frame timings. At least in this game they did. The next game we're looking at is Counter-Strike 2. Considering this is probably one of the most popular games on Steam, the chipset drivers should have some optimizations for this game. At least we can hope they do. With the stock Windows drivers, we got an average FPS of 150.5 with a 1% low of 69.4. We also got a 0.1% low of 35.3. Once upgrading to the AMD chipset drivers, we got an average FPS of 153.4. They gave us almost three extra frames at a 1.9% improvement. Still kind of within margin of error though, but it is a win, kind of at least. However, once we look at the 1% low, we got an 85.1, which if you're doing the math is a 20.3% improvement from the stock drivers. And the gains don't stop there either. Our 0.1% low was 58.7, giving us a 49.8% improvement over the drivers that came with Windows. Yeah, it looks like frame timings are what's getting the most benefit from the chipset drivers. And this has definitely helped CS2. The next game we're looking at is Cyberpunk. Now, in my last video, I really couldn't get this game to run right, and it was pretty much the same version of the game that's in this video, but I was able to get it to run a little bit better by running it at 1080p instead of 3440 by 1440 like I normally do. 
With the drivers that came pre-installed with Windows, I got an average FPS of 98.9 and a 1% low of 75.4. I also got a 0.1% low of 66.6. .6. Once updating to the AMD chipset drivers, I got an average FPS of 100.2. This is only a 1.3% improvement and well within the margin of error, but it is an improvement. For the 1% low, we got a 77.2, which is only a 2.4% improvement and kind of borderline within the margin of error. And for the 0.1% low, I got a 65.6, .6, which if you're keeping track, that's a 1.5% loss. But like before, still within the margin of error. So as we can see from Cyberpunk, the chipset drivers just don't matter at all. It ran almost exactly the same, no matter which chipset drivers I was using. The next game we're looking at is GTA 5. With the drivers that come pre-installed with Windows, we got an average frame rate of 121.8 and a 1% low of 90.3. We also got a 0.1% low of 76.8. Once updating to the latest AMD chipset drivers, we got an average FPS of 124.1, which again is almost three FPS, and a 1.9% improvement. We also got a 91.3% 1% low, which is a 1.1% improvement from what we had. However, the story kind of falls off the rails when we get to the 0.1% low. For that, we got a 66.3, which is a 14.7% loss. Now, I know GTA 5 gets kind of flaky over 100 FPS, and I'm kind of chalking the 0.1% low up to that. However, it very well might be the chipset drivers that are causing it. The next game we're looking at is Red Dead Redemption 2. With the original Windows drivers, we got an average FPS of 66.7 and a 1% low of 55 even. We also got a 0.1% low of 25.2. Once updating to the latest chipset drivers, we got an average FPS of 68.1. That's a 2.1% improvement and Typically, I would categorize everything over 2% as outside the margin of error, but this was pretty close. For the 1% low, we got a 55.2, which was only a 0.4% increase. However, once we look at the 0.1% low, we got a 49.4, which is a 64.9% increase. So as you can see, it's not totally worthless keeping your chipset drivers up to date. However, I think I need to explain some context here. Because when you see numbers like 50% and 60% better, you really need to put those numbers in context to make them really make sense. If we're talking about a 60% improvement in our average frame rate, then that's huge. That's the kind of thing that you typically build a whole new system in order to achieve. However, when we're talking about the 1% low, or even worse, the 0.1% low, we're talking about the lowest 1% average frame rate and the 0.1% lowest average frame rate, respectively. A 60% improvement in the 0.1% low is going to be almost indistinguishable during gameplay. I mean, these numbers are more indicative of micro stuttering and latency than gains that you would see with your average frame rate. Now, the goal of the 1% low and the 0.1% low is to have those numbers as close to the average frame rate as possible. Now, they're never gonna be the same as the average frame rate because depending on where you are in the game, the frame rate will be higher or lower simply based on what models and textures have to be loaded in the scene. However, a better 1% low simply means that the 1% low is closer to the average frame rate, meaning that those dips in frame rate are kind of less noticeable. With that said, we definitely got enough improvement to where I think I'm going to recommend installing the AMD chipset drivers from now on. In fact, I'm going to do it on my own systems as well. Upgrading your drivers in many cases will improve your system's performance. To how much really depends on what device it is we're talking about. Chipset drivers are pretty high up in the food chain of important drivers, so keeping them up to date is probably a good idea. What's higher though in that that food chain is your GPU drivers, and I always recommend keeping those up to date. In fact, if you want to see the gains that you can get from just keeping your GPU drivers updated, then check out this video where I show you a pretty considerable performance gain from doing nothing more than updating your GPU drivers. 
It was actually quite impressive. As always, you guys have a great day.